So I was sitting here thinking, and I thought to myself, I wonder, I was wondering if you guys might be interested in knowing part of my thought process in order to get this saw running to where it is. So this is the, the Super XL Auto that we ported. So let me kind of go over that. We'll see how this turns out. I, uh, I'm horrible at explaining things in details, but I'll do my best. Alrighty. So I'm going to show you a couple cylinders here just to give you an idea of how I do things. This is a Homelite Super XL Auto cylinder. And here's the transfers. This is what you look, you're, you're looking at from the factory. Now, the exhaust port. On this one is kind of dirty. So let me show you this one. See how it's shaped? That's from the factory. I do not typically do anything about the width right off the start. Um, almost never. So what I was doing, see, Whenever I ported that saw, I deleted the base gasket, which caused the cylinder, the, the roof of the exhaust, to come down some. So I had to make up for some of that difference. So I took took the, uh, right here by the bridge, I took it up from 106. It started at 106 degrees and I took it up to 103. And at, the, and at the, uh, the other edge here, I left it alone. I didn't do anything. I just kind of rounded it up. So most of the work I did was in the transfers. So I ground all this out and literally just kind of beveled it off at a slope up to the top. And did the same thing on each side of this bridge. That's all I did. Now my whole thought process to this <clears throat> is because I don't know what the maximum output of that exhaust cylinder or at the, at the exhaust port is. So here's another cylinder. This is off of pulling. Very similar design. As you can see, there's plenty of room that could be removed. Now, my whole thought, but my whole thought process here is just to find out what the limitations of the exhaust port are, really. See, if, if you'd uh, be running the saw, and as the RPM's going up, you uh, you basically find a point where the saw just runs lean, right? But what if the transfers are opened up to a point that it'll flow really well? Then as your RPMs go up, you're able to compensate that extra flow so you still have power without going lean. But you'll find that point in the transfers because I want to see how increased flow changes the performance before I do the exhaust. I don't like doing a lot of work to the exhaust until I'm happy with the way my transfers are performing. And after I do a few of these, I'll kind of get an idea of how I wanted to set them all. That's just part of the process. You know what I mean? Now that I know that I can go a lot further from where it is, at least I know how my transfers changes are going to cause the saw to run. But... I'm just trying to give you a little clue into my thought process and how I work through this. I'm horrible at explaining things. I am. I'm completely self-taught. I've never had anybody sit down there and tell me this is the way you need to do it. Uh, I actually had to figure it out one little bit at a time on my own. Uh, I was learning this stuff back when the internet just started. So, you know, we were dialing everything up on the phone line. And this information wasn't available. 
So I literally had to tear my motor apart. I couldn't even tell you how many times I had that motor apart. Uh, just figuring it out. And then next thing I knew, I had buddies that were doing it. And we just kind of all got together and we kind of figured out porting on our own. We kind of figured out what we like and how we like things to perform. See, I'm coming from the motorcycle and ATV world. Uh, my personal, I was drag racing a Yamaha Banshee. It's a, it's a, if you're not familiar, it's a 350cc ATV. Uh, it's a two-cylinder. And hey, if you ever port a two-cylinder, you've got a whole new world there. And stencils and everything because you got to do the same thing to one cylinder that you do the other and you got to get them to match as close as perfect as possible because otherwise one will flow better than the other and then everything goes haywire get into that world once and that's where i started so this is actually easy for me <clears throat> getting into the saws you know it's it's a lot easier for me to do these than it is those two cylinders but I'm just trying to give you an idea of my thought process and how I work through things. I always want to find out the limitations of the exhaust before I start modifying that exhaust. And the only way I'm going to find that is if I correct all my issues in the transfers and intake and so forth. That's why you see me putting a lot of effort on the reeds because these reeds are awful. Um, so I'm hoping to find a permanent solution to the reeds. And I just, this saw is, was all about testing. This whole build was just to test how much better it would perform with the little bit of changes I did. Cause, but remember one thing, a lot of times we should try to take things in baby steps first. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what we're doing here. I have... I have a few more of these Super XLs, so yeah, why don't we'll do it again? Um, I think the only thing I'll need for parts is a carb kit, maybe. Well, the one runs, so maybe we'll do the one that runs. But I need a carb kit. No, maybe not. I definitely need new seals on it. So I have the one side. I would need the other side, so I would need the flywheel side seal. But we'll do this again. And this time, we'll go a little more aggressive on the exhaust. Just a little bit. And we'll see how much better that one performs. And then we'll get to see examples of this, these saws at different stages of porting. We'll be able to look at stock. We'll be able to look at just the one that I did those corrections to and open up the transfers. The next one will be just a little bit further than that. But the next one's probably going to end up at around... Yeah, well, the next one's probably going to be around 101 or 102. I'm thinking. It depends on what my squish is at. Because squish is a big factor here too. But we'll see. We'll see how far we can take it. But just hit me up if you got any questions. All right, guys. Um... Y'all have a good day now, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, thanks.